conditions. Here's a look at the red flag warning that we've been watching. This isn't specifically in that area where the line fire is burning right now, but areas of the Santa Monica Mountains, the San Gabriel Mountains, LA County, Ventura County Mountains, where we have all the ingredients, all the conditions where a fire can start and it can spread rapidly. And even though that area in San Bernardino County is not under red flag warnings, the ingredients are still there for that. And unfortunately, going into tonight, it doesn't look like we're going to get much of a break, Geo. That's mainly because we're not going to cool down much. We're not done with this heat that we've been seeing. Uh, it, it, we're really not going to get a break until Monday once we finally start to see high pressure moving away. So we don't get a break. We don't cool down much at night, and we're going to continue to see these winds overnight as well. We're going to continue to monitor the situation uh, right now near Highland, how the temperatures are changing, the winds. But in that area, be prepared. If you see smoke, it's going to start spreading a little bit further into areas like San Bernardino County, even into LA County over the next 24 hours. So something that we're going to be keeping a close eye on for everyone uh, here in the next Weather Center, Geo. All right, Danny, thank you so much. And for anyone who might just be joining in now, as we're four minutes past the top of the hour, it's worth a reset to keep you posted on what's going on right now out of San Bernardino County with the line fire. This fire started a couple of days ago, but at this latest update, it has massively grown in size. You're taking a look at the active hotspots on the right side of your screen live from SkyCal. That is what's going on right now. That's what you can see and when I say see, it's tough to do that because you notice how smoky it is, and that ties back into what Danny was just saying. In terms of the smoky conditions, you have, of course, air quality concerns that will play a factor with that as well. But let's run you through the evacuation orders and the evacuation warnings, as well as shelters and everything else one more time. So we'll go through everything again in case you're just joining us, getting the latest update on the line fire close to Highland right now. It has burned so far more than 7,000 acres. Last check, no updates on containment, so right now we can presume until we can get an update from officials that it is a 0% containment and likely only going to keep growing, especially considering the terrain that it is located in, the excessive heat we're dealing with, the wind, as well as everything else. Right side of your screen, again, is that footage from earlier that we're queuing up of the fire burning alongside. Just notice just how much can be burned so quickly from these flames. Now. As we mentioned, those evacuation orders run through them one more time. This is from the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department. And a reminder again that evacuation orders are an immediate threat to life. That is a law enforcement order to leave immediately, lawfully close to public access. So just to highlight the significance of evacuation orders. They are not warnings, they are orders. So if you can, you should head out. That is going to be from the area from Calle del Rio to Highway 38, including Greenspot Road North areas of running spring east of Highway 330 and south of Highway 18, as well as all underdeveloped land east of Highway 330 to Summer Trail Place and north of Highland Ave. Again, those are the evacuation orders. Let's get to the evacuation warnings. That is going to be neighborhoods east of Church Street, north of Highland Ave, neighborhoods east of Weaver, north of Greenspot to the Iron Bridge. Evacuation shelter, those are always set up at least somewhere nearby. That right now is going to be the Emanuel Baptist Church on 28355 Baseline Street. That is in Highland. And for anyone with pets, animals, animal evacuation shelter is going to be set up on at the, the DeVore Animal Shelter on Shelter Way. Specifically, it is 19777 in San Bernardino. We also have our Lori Perez, who is on the ground. Of course, we know that this is threatening structures, threatening homes. A lot of people being able to see it close by, too. Lori, we're looking at your live shot right now behind you. It is incredibly active. What can you tell us from your vantage point, your perspective so far? Well, I can tell you, Gio, we didn't arrive here uh, very long ago, maybe about 15 minutes, so I haven't even talked to anybody, but I wanted to make sure to jump up on live here to show you what we can see, an incredible amount of smoke. I mean, I've covered a lot of fires in my time, and I can't say that I've seen this kind of billowing smoke before. We were a little bit further up this road here. We're off the 330, which is closed in both directions at this point. Of course, we have uh, the ability to get past those closures, so we got up here and uh, if Greg, if you could show the curvature of the road, kind of where we were, um, we were much closer to the flames. And this is as quick of a moving fire as I have ever seen. Probably in the five minutes that we were standing there, we were both remarking, it probably grew at least 100 yards. I mean, the flames just erupting. The other significant thing about this fire 
is how loud it is. You have probably heard the term a roaring fire. I can tell you this is so loud. It actually kind of sounds like a waterfall. Uh, that's how tremendously loud it is. The flames, uh, we understand further up the 330 have just taken over. That is no longer passable further up the 330 uh, from where we are. And uh, actually, as we were standing up there, and getting great footage uh, showing the uh, devastation, a fire official came up and told us that we had to move immediately, that the flames would be where we were standing in less than five minutes. So of course, uh, you know, we immediately got out of there and came further down. But even from where we are, you can see uh, just how these flames are taking over the mountains here. It is, uh, again, uh, extremely hot here. It's humid, and uh, these flames seem to be just continuing to grow at every moment. Um, uh, this is really quite something to see. Ooh, I don't know, you know, I'm going to try and be quiet and see if you can hear it because every now and then you really do hear like a tremendous force um, of the flames. It's probably hard to do, but you can see just how much that is fueling. So uh, we were going to send it back to you. We're going to try to get to a different vantage point so that we can get some more uh, shots to you and show you just how much this is expanding. And, of course, we want to stay as safe as we can um, as we continue to cover this. Uh, Geo, back to you. Of course, Lori, yes, safety is the number one concern, so go ahead and get to a safe spot. We'll check back in with you when the time comes. In the meantime, yes, I also want to confirm on our end here that we were able to hear those flames roaring at least as much as we could through the uh, screens here. Taking a live look from Sky Count right now, you notice the uh, other vantage point from the eye in the sky is the smoke just blanketing this entire area right now. We also noticed during Lori's live shot the wind. If you caught it on some of those bushes, some of those trees, that is going to be significant as things continue to develop throughout the rest of the evening because that fire is not slowing down in terms of size and its movement. And firefighters have quite the challenge ahead when you have to consider, you look at the map there and notice all the mountains. There's, there's a lot to get through and that steep terrain makes it difficult to access. It makes it difficult to establish fire lines and all the sorts. So many, many uh, crews and, uh, and things will be out there to try and establish some sort of containment on this fire. So you have evacuation orders, you have evacuation warnings, there's the shelters that are in place and established as well. We'll do our best uh, to get Lori to a safe location to see if she can talk to any people who have already evacuated or perhaps trying to evacuate because we know that this is going to impact homes. This is, threat this is going to threaten structures, threaten homes, families, etc. And that's not a threat that's going to go away anytime soon. So once again, a reminder that the line fire exploding in size. This only started a couple of days ago on the 5th, and now it is over 7,000 acres in size, likely only going to get larger as the hours progress into the rest of the evening and perhaps into the rest of the weekend. Because as so many of us know, we've already been dealing with it for days and we'll continue to deal with it for days. That's the heat. That is that excessive heat. It's not just a typical summertime heat that we have all been dealing with. That is not going to make things easier when it comes to this firefight, as well as the wind, as well as air quality concerns. That's something else to monitor, especially if there's anybody who is not dealing with an evacuation order or a warning. All that smoke and everything else having to live with that and deal with that is going to be uh, quite quite the hurdle to get over. We mentioned with, uh, or Danny mentioned, I should say, when we checked in with her about 10 minutes or so ago and throughout the rest of the evening, we will also actually, let's check in with her right now, in fact, because uh, Danny, you mentioned yeah. earlier that it's dry, it's hot, it's prolonged heat, you have gusty winds, it, it's so much going on right now and it doesn't yeah. look like that relief is coming anytime soon. No, no, you know, it's not, Gio. We've been seeing um, these nonstop days, this heat, and we've been talking about it all week, that fire danger was gonna be elevated. Um, I wanna talk about a couple things. Yes, we have all these um, ingredients out there. It's hot, it's dry. We've had some gusty winds in that area. It kind of feels like a blow dryer. But what's crazy about this fire, and we've seen this before, is that this fire is making its own weather. I mentioned this just a couple minutes ago, but if you're just joining us, it has exploded because of fire clouds. So if a fire burns hot enough, it can actually create clouds similar to a thunderstorm as hot air kind of shoots up into the atmosphere. And these clouds that get created, they can produce lightning, they can produce rain, they can produce 
crazy erratic winds, which is what we're seeing today. And that's why this fire has been able to explode. Lori mentioned just a couple minutes ago the smoke that's, that she's seeing out there and how intense it is. Here's a look at our smoke forecast. And when you are seeing those reds, those yellows, that's indicating thick smoke. But when you see those purples, I mean, it doesn't get worse than that. So you're seeing that in areas of Big Bear Lake. You've got that over in Running Springs. And then we're also starting to see some of that thick smoke developing in San Bernardino right now. I'm going to zoom you out. This is a look at the next 24 hours where this smoke is moving to. So you can see because of the winds that are kind of coming out of the southwest, the smoke's going to start to make its way into Rancho Cucamonga, into the San Gabriel Valley, all the way into the LA Basin by Sunday. So here's another look at that. This is going into the overnight hours. This is a look at 11 o'clock. Here's that smoke moving, making its way into the San Gabriel Valley. This is early Sunday morning uh, into areas of Los Angeles, pushing all the way into Calabasas towards Malibu. So areas over there, we are going to start to see some of this thick smoke because we already have it. I mean, this is crazy what we're seeing. I want to also take a look at in a lot of our areas here in Southern California, we have an air quality alert that's in place. And so this is in place because we are dealing with this thick smoke out there that could be dangerous in some areas. And so this is going to stay in effect inland empire. It's going to be in Orange County. So if you're noticing that the sky is a little bit dark in some areas, that's because we are dealing with this increasing air pollution all due to this wildfire smoke. It's hot out there too. I mean, we have not gotten a break. We all know this. This heat it has been treacherous. It has been brutal. And for a lot of us, we have not gotten any kind of relief, even at nighttime. So right now in Highland, this is right where the fire is burning close to it. Temperatures right now 104 degrees, not as hot as yesterday, but still this is hot for our standards. We're still running about 10 to 20 degrees above what's normal. On top of that, it's not just hot. It's also very dry out there. Relative humidity, humidity down to about 16% and our dew point is at 49. So that means it is really, really dry. And then we have gusts nearing 20 miles per hour right now. It's coming out of the southwest. So none of this is helping the fight. It's dry. It's been hot for days. And on top of that, we're going to take a look also at our overnight lows. We've all been feeling it where we don't cool down at night in that area of the Inland Empire. We've got lows dropping again tonight down to the 70s and 80s. So after a really really hot day, we still don't get a break from the intense heat that we've been seeing. I mean, it has been brutal out there and this fire has been able to explode to such an intense level. Here's a look at our active hotspots. I'll zoom you in and you can just see all right there, all the spots that have developed. And again, because of these fire clouds, I mean, this fire is creating its own weather. It's able to create these pyrocumulonimbus clouds that are actually able to create winds that help spawn more fires. And that's what makes it difficult for firefighters to keep up with this. So going into tonight, it's still warm. Another hot day tomorrow. But by Monday and Tuesday, we start to feel some relief. Thankfully, winds are not to um, a crazy intense level right now. But if we continue to see some of these winds developing from these clouds, that's when we could see more of these fire sparks, spots igniting, or we could see this spreading even quicker. So that's something that we're monitoring here at GEO. Um, just a really tough situation since we aren't getting any break from this heat. I mean, it is just brutal out there, and this heat has been treacherous. Certainly a lot to keep an eye on. Uh, Danny, thank you so much for that update. We'll check back in with you a little later. We do want to give one more update when it comes to evacuation orders. The latest one uh, just coming in a few minutes ago from the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department. They want to add the communities of Running Springs and Arrow Bear Lake are all under an evacuation order as of right now. So that is the latest update. And something else that was worth pointing out as we continue to monitor a lot of different threads, officials trying to share as much information as possible. And we're also trying to stay on top of it as well. As you take a look at this video right now, this is footage from earlier as uh, from earlier a fire burning through those mountainsides, the forest. It's it's a lot going on right there. You see just how intense that is. Compare that to the live shots we've been seeing from Sky Cal, from Lori Perez down on the scene. It is a lot to keep in mind. But to that Cal Fire update, they just actually tweeted this a couple minutes ago, and it's worth pointing out because they specifically cite the line fire. They are reminding uh, folks anywhere that flying uh, a drone or a similar type of aircraft can be extremely dangerous to pilots and other aircraft in the immediate area. 
and that certainly affects their response because it puts so many people in danger. Now, it's worth bringing up because they also mentioned in the same exact post that yesterday on the line fire, there were two separate drone incursions into the fire area and that these actions, of course, endanger lives and carry severe penalties. So that's something that we're keeping an eye on as well. But let's get back out to Lori Perez, who is live from the scene right down there. And Lori, uh, when you mentioned earlier that it sounded like a waterfall, when you went silent for a moment just to try and highlight that, I can tell you from back out here, it certainly did sound like that. And the wind behind you, you can also take a note of it too. So it's a lot that uh, crews are dealing with from where you are right now. Absolutely. You know, and we were actually going to pack up and head back and try to uh, meet up with some evacuees. But we stayed because I wanted to show you just exactly how quickly this fire is moving. I was talking about it before, but I mean, just in the moments since I was last live with you, you can see how much the flames have grown in those few moments. And that noise that I talked about that you just mentioned has, you know, increased fivefold. I mean, it is amazing. You know, when Danny was talking about the weather, uh, that it can create, I was wondering whether or not what I was hearing was thunder. I, I, I'm not sure. There have been reports that there is lightning under those smoke clouds. I, I'm not sure what it is, but I can tell you it is really loud and uh, really intimidating. But I wanted to come back here live to make sure that you were able to see what we are seeing in terms of the flames really flaring up and exploding moment to moment, um, which is really just something to watch. We have again been told that even where we are, we've moved down from where we were before and we've been told that now where we are could be at risk. So we're not going to stay here for much longer because eventually they do think that it will be uh, to the point where we are standing. Very smoky, a lot in the air. You can see I have the goggles on. Uh, you know, we should probably also have masks on uh, because there is a lot of smoke and debris in the atmosphere at this point. Super hot and uh, just really something to watch as we are from this vantage point. Um, you know, I'm hesitant to leave only because uh, the pictures are so incredible. But of course, we do want to make sure that we talk to people being affected by this, people who have been uh, moved out of their homes and who are taking shelter now in emergency shelters that have been set up, moving themselves, their families and their animals to safety. A lot going on in this area. We understand that the 330 up to Running Springs is completely closed off. We were thinking about perhaps making our way to Running Springs where there are evacuations, uh, but we understand that that is now at least um, an hour and a half, if not a three hour drive to get up there. So, uh, you know, really trying to make the most use, uh, best use of our time uh, as we bring this news to you. Um, but I wanted to make sure that you saw this, of course. I'm going to send it back to you guys now. Lori, thank you so much. And uh, right now on the right side of your screen here is the earlier shots of uh, approaching the site there of the fire. It is just intense heat. Uh, we'll be able to check in with Lori a little bit later on as the evening progresses. Uh, but there's the full screen image of just how intense the flames are, the smoke billowing up into the air and not to mention the air quality is going to be the major concern. Now, in just the last couple of minutes, there's been another update when it comes to evacuation orders. We first told you about the ones affecting communities of the communities of Running Springs and Arrow Bear Lake. Those are under an evacuation order, according to the San Bernardino <coughs> County Sheriff's Department. Just in the last couple of minutes, this is effective immediately. The area east of Orchard Road to Clover Hill from Highland Ave North to the foothills. Those are now under an evacuation order as well. So this list continues to climb and grow in just the last 20 or so minutes since we first broke in to give you the update on this breaking news out of San Bernardino County. Uh, those new evacuation orders in for the line fire. You notice the right side of your screen with the map again live is from SkyCal on the left side of your screen. That sort of highlights what we've been looking at and just what makes it so difficult for crews is that it's such steep terrain. It's so difficult to access all of this and we're going to look into and check in with Danny a little bit later on in terms of the weather and how that's affecting. Uh, you have the heat, you have the winds and then if there are any potential lightning strikes or anything else that Lori might 
have mentioned uh, from her vantage point, that would also affect any aircraft or personnel in the air to try and combat these flames. But uh, just in the last 24 hours, it is important to note that this fire that started two days ago and has now exponentially grown in size. We're coming up on the 24 hour mark from when this fire first started, and it's tripled in size in just the last 24 hours. So we're looking at a fire that is over 7,000 acres, presumably 0% contained. I haven't gotten an update on that, but so far from what we're seeing, it is exponentially moving. And uh, Danny, as we bring you back in here now, Lori made this mention, and it's worth asking you uh, when it comes to the fire making its own weather. You made that point earlier, but uh, have there been any reports of lightning strikes or anything like that that could potentially uh, be happening over there? And we know how, of course, that could play into uh, aircraft uh, attacking this fire as well. Yeah, you know what, um, Gio, we have been seeing thunderstorms developing this afternoon. A lot of those in San Diego County over there, though, it does look like we've seen some up in the mountains and a lot of these storms can very easily sometimes they show up on our radar uh, very easily create this um, dry lightning that could actually help uh, to spark fires that's why it's always a concern when we're dealing with these thunderstorms that develop when the conditions are so dry dry lightning is a concern because we get the lightning we don't get the rain and this could help spark ignite fires so in this area um, I mean Lori mentioned it hearing that thunder potentially seeing that lightning I mean it's it's the fire that's actually creating this, which is kind of crazy and wild to understand that a fire will get hot enough and it can actually create these fire clouds. So it shoots this hot air up into the sky and it, it creates a cloud very similar to a thunderstorm. And it's a cloud that uh, can actually trigger lightning. It can create what's known as fire tornadoes. It can even turbocharge winds that accelerate the spread of the fire. And that's what we're noticing. I mean, National Weather Service um, has already indicated that it does look like uh, the explosion from this fire is all due to what's known as these fire clouds um, and that this was ignited earlier today. Uh, the line fire in San Bernardino County, it has been able to explode due to the outflow winds from these fire clouds. And that's what makes this so incredibly dangerous that this fire can actually create what's helping it spread and accelerate. Here's a look at the conditions in Highland right now. Um, so a couple things. Yes, we're seeing the fire uh, kind of helping to accelerate or spread the fire, but also we're dealing with really dangerous conditions, mainly because we are in the midst of a brutal heat wave here in Southern California. We've had uh, nonstop days of heat, not just in the afternoon, also at night. It's 104 degrees right now in Highland. You take a couple steps outside, and I mean, you just feel it. The heat has felt very, very heavy. It's dry out there, and also it is windy. We have gusts up to 18 miles per hour, but we have localized areas within this fire where the winds are even stronger, and that's because these outflow winds are coming from these fire clouds that have been developed. So some of the winds in this area are even stronger than 18 to 20 miles per hour, and that's the big concern. That's when we start to see these flames fanning out and being fueled, fueling um, other fires and other flames. So we're going to take a look at a couple other things. Um, it's our next weather smoke forecast. I mean, this area is just riddled with smoke right now. You see those purples that's indicating that really thick smoke that a lot of folks are seeing. And you saw that uh, in Lori Prez's live shot. Um, you can't really see much of anything when you're dealing with smoke that's this thick. And really over the next 24 hours, because of the movement of the winds, we're going to continue to see this smoke kind of fanning out. So folks in Rancho Cucamonga, uh, we're going to see that in areas of the San Gabriel Valley, San Fernando Valley, potentially seeing some of the smoke by Sunday morning into Sunday afternoon. So that's how powerful these winds are. And on top of all that, we're dealing with a really bad air quality because we have all this heat. So all of this um, air pollution is kind of just getting stuck right here and it's not really able to move out right now. Um, on top of all that, I mentioned the air quality alert. It's still hot out there. We're dealing with red flag conditions. And even though we don't have red flag warnings that are specifically in that area of San Bernardino County, everyone here in Southern California 
has really been under the threat of these fires because we've been dealing with the heat. It's been dry out there. We've had these winds picking up a little bit each afternoon, but this red flag warning is in effect until this evening. If we're not under this red flag warning, that doesn't mean you're not in the clear. I mean, we are still seeing these really dangerous conditions that are favorable for fire spread, for fires to start and to spread rapidly. And so this continues. And so we've got to also talk about the fact that we're really not going to notice big changes here in Southern California until Tuesday. So the heat is with us tomorrow. It's with us again on Monday. Things are going to feel a little bit cooler Sunday and Monday, but we're still dealing with temperatures that are soaring into the triple digits again on Monday. But by Tuesday, we finally get some relief today. The one little change has been the monsoonal moisture that's been moving in. And so with that, that's what's been um, helping to uh, some of these thunderstorms to develop and I actually want to take you also to our radar so I could show you what we've been watching this afternoon because the monsoonal moisture is moving in. It's really hot out there. And so we've been seeing some thunderstorms firing up. A lot of these have been out in the desert communities. You can see that. But right over here, you can see this storm right here. Um, very close to where the fire is. Um, and for the most part, we were seeing you can notice those lightning strikes that have been moving through. And so this very likely could have been one of those situations where we saw that dry lightning developing right there up in the mountains. So that's something that we're also watching right now. The green you're seeing, it's not meaning that we're seeing rain right now. It's actually really, really dry out there, uh, but we are seeing some of these dry thunderstorms potentially developing in this area as well. So things are going to stay really, really hot out there. We're still under for all of our area in Southern California. We are still under these excessive heat warnings. And so this is still indicating that here in Southern California, we are dealing with dangerous, dangerous heat. This is heat that we've been talking about that can lead to things like heat related illness. It can lead to heat exhaustion. Um, but on top of that, this is the kind of heat that could lead to fire starting to spreading because it has been hot for days and days and days. And it's going to stay like this again Sunday, again on Monday. This is going to finally expire Monday night. And then we're going to start to see things cooling down on Tuesday. On top of that, we also have to mention that things are not cooling down at night. You feel it out there. I mean, it is uncomfortable out there. This heat has been brutal. And for a lot of us, you can see at nights we don't drop down. This is the lowest our temperatures get at night going into tomorrow morning. And you can see right there in the Inland Empire areas like San Bernardino, we're only dropping to the mid 70s. This is a warm for us this time of year. Areas like Claremont in the 80s and some of our foothill communities haven't even dropped below 90 degrees. And this is also a factor in this is that we don't get any kind of cool down at night. Our bodies don't have a chance to cool down. And unfortunately, with these fires, we're not getting a break at nighttime as well. So that's something that we're monitoring. Um, if you're in this area, you're going to be noticing the smoke. Please be incredibly careful with any kind of time outside. It's not just hot, but our air quality is not not good right now. So things are dangerous in that area. We'll continue to watch things geo, uh, but for the next couple of days, the heat is sticking with us. But by Tuesday, that's going to be the key day when things really start to turn around and change. Danny, thank you so much. Yeah, one of the other things that was striking in your graphics was the fact that it's such low humidity. So that also doesn't help when it comes to uh, fighting the flames as we get on through the rest of the evening. Uh, thank you for that. We'll check back in. Later on, in the meantime, let's see if we can get back out to Lori Perez. We've been checking in with her periodically over the last half hour or so. Uh, you got there, Lori got there about 45 minutes or so ago, and it has been an intense scenery behind her the entire time. Lori, as we come back out to you again, you still notice the intense scenery behind you. What are you looking at? What are you seeing right now? Okay, so now, um, as Danny mentioned earlier, sometimes it gets hard to see these flames because of the tremendous amount of smoke that they are creating. Uh, so the smoke cover kind of uh, covers everything uh, that is behind it. Uh, but we do want to show you, see that little flare up or that large flare up, I should say, uh, that you can see right now? That's where we were. 45 minutes ago. We were standing there and that's when the fire official told us you got to get out of here because this is going to be overtaken within five minutes, five minutes. And sure enough, it has been overtaken. Uh, we understand very clearly now why he wanted us to get out of that area. You might uh, be hearing uh, some loud noise behind us. If Greg, if you want to spin around and show uh, there's a bulldozer uh, behind us now that is showing 
kind of clearing some of the brush um, all around this area as they prepare for the flames to eventually make their way down here. They are trying to clear pathways and trying to uh, preserve as much as they can. A lot of activity here off the 330 um, as the flames have t overtaken the 330 on the way to Running Springs. Um, you know, one of the locals here just commented that the Running Springs fire chief um, just happened to come up to where we are and had to turn around so he cannot and not even he can get through uh, this way and is going to have to go around to get up to his region but uh, just every moment here the amount of flames that are being produced is tremendous up on the top of that mountain you can see that is a new line of flames that we have not seen before we also heard that uh, further along on Highway 18 a lightning strike uh, started a, a new start to these fires over there. So as Danny mentioned, this is creating weather, it is creating lightning and thunder, and with that comes the risk of, of new starts, and we've already heard of at least one. So a, a lot to keep an eye on here. These firefighters are being tremendously tested, um, and especially with the how quickly this is growing, how large it already is, the extreme heat that they are dealing with, the extreme uh, smoke that they are dealing with, uh, just a lot to handle out here. And we are certainly hoping that uh, everyone is staying safe. Greg, in fact, if you want to go back to that road, uh, see the road where it's uh, flaring up right there? We were right there. That is right where we were standing, which is, you know, kind of startling when you think about it, but uh, just another reinforcement of why we always have to be alert, why we always have to be listening to the fire officials when they say, you got to go, we do have to go. Even now, um, where we are standing, we're set up in the parking lot across the way, but you know, our, our vehicle is running, it is pointed in the direction, so that if we need to hop in and leave immediately, we can do so with as much uh, speed as possible of course as this is tremendously changing uh, so rapidly now uh, a lot to watch and and really something to see uh, we're going to send it back to you now hi Lori. can you hear me this is leslie jumping in here with geo um the, we were getting reports that aircraft there uh, possibly had to halt uh and uh, ground there in the area because of the weather that this fire had started to create. Are you seeing aircraft, firefighting aircraft in the air right now? We have not seen any air support since we were here, and I would imagine that is both uh, because of a combination not only of the weather that's being created by this fire, but also the smoke. I mean, this is as thick as any fire that I've seen. And uh, the amount that is being emitted every moment is just really um, covering everything. As I said, you know, it's it's even blocking the flames, which we know are quite large behind it. But it's just so thick and billowing uh, that I'm not surprised that we don't see air support. We have not seen any since since we've been up here at all. Yeah, as you mentioned, you can see just how how hard, how difficult that visibility is out there. And of course, uh, as Gio was speaking to Danny earlier, she's talking about this fire being able to essentially essentially create its own weather. We know um, the pilot upping uh, SkyCal right now saying that uh, they are seeing lightning strikes in that area um, because this fire has essentially created its own storm in a sense. But it's just incredible to see those flames behind you, Lori. And of course, we want you. Uh, to stay safe there. Thank you again for that update. Absolutely. And as we get uh, another look here, uh, we want to point out this is uh, from uh, this is a live shot right now, again, from right behind where Mallory was standing. Mm. And you notice just how fast those flames have been moving. It, it doesn't get any less striking the more she points it out that where she was standing just about 20 minutes ago has now started creeping and creeping and creeping. And this is the live vantage point from up in the air. You notice mm -hmm. the smoke and the visibility is certainly something to keep an eye on. Uh, and the fact that just in the last half hour or so, we've added two new areas of eva for evacuation orders. So on top of the ones we've listed uh, to start off, we have a couple of extra ones. So it's worth at least going through the evacuation orders right now in case anybody's just joining us now within the last few minutes or so. Uh, now that we're approaching six o'clock in the evening where off the top, 
It's the area from Calle del Rio to Highway 38 that includes Greenspot Road North. You have areas of Running Spring east of Highway 330 and south of Highway 18, as well as all underdeveloped land east of Highway 330 to Summer Trail Place and north of Highland Ave. Those are the first three. The most recent ones within the last 20 minutes include communities of Running Springs and Arrow Bear Lake. Those are under an evacuation order and areas east of Orchard Road to Clover Hill from Highland Ave North to the foothills. So it uh, gives you a perspective of just how fast this is growing and how difficult this fight is turning into uh, on top of the fact that it's just tripled in size in the last 24 hours. So things are getting very intense over in the Highland area right now. And I know you've been talking about this, Gio. Uh, you talked about the evacuation orders right now, which means really it's an immediate threat to life. Law enforcement asking people to leave immediately if they can. There are also evacuation warnings, and this is a potential threat to life or property. So if you feel like you need to leave now, you, you can. It is still a warning, but you need to keep updated on what is happening in your area. If you're seeing that smoke, if you're seeing those flames, it's about time to leave. And uh, neighborhoods currently under evacuation warnings do include neighborhoods each east of Church Street north of Highland Ave and neighborhoods east of Weaver north of Green Spot to the Iron Bridge. And the evacuation shelter on top of all of that, for anybody who needs to know that immediately, that is the Emanuel Baptist Church that is on Baseline Street, specifically 28355 Baseline Street in Highland. And for those with pets, animals, the animal evacuation shelter is the DeVore Animal Shelter on 19777 Shelter Way in San Bernardino. With that, let's bring in back uh, Danny Roberti. Danny, uh, this has been something we've been talking about now for uh, almost an hour. Uh, Lori mentioned it in her first live shot that yeah. it sounded like a waterfall. The intensity of mm -hmm. those flames. We saw the wind blowing behind her. You said it, the fire's making its own weather. That's how intense yeah. it's becoming and that's it's, it's affecting a lot of things from the response to evacuation orders. There's a lot going on with this fire right now. Yeah, everything is conspiring together right now, you guys. This is a very, very dangerous situation. It's very, very localized when we're dealing with this. Um, so this fire, it is hot enough, it is intense enough that it is creating its own weather right here. And this is what's helping to create more hot spots. It's helping to fan the flames. It's helping this fire to spread rapidly. And you can see just dozens and dozens of hot spots. You can see how this has exploded and it's all because of these fire clouds. It's a very dangerous situation. We have these crazy outflow winds that have developed. It's known as pyrocumulonimbus clouds. And so everything is conspiring together. It's the heat, it's how dry things are. And when a fire gets hot enough, this hot air is able to shoot up into the atmosphere and it creates these clouds clouds very similar to a thunderstorm. These are clouds that can trigger lightning. They can create fire tornadoes. They create these turbocharged winds, these outflow winds that can actually ignite more fires. And that's what we're seeing in this situation. These clouds, they're so intense that they modify the local weather right there in San Bernardino County. So on top of all that, I mean, we are dealing with, you can see conditions in Highland gusts up to 18 miles per hour. But the thing is where Lori is right now, there are most likely places right there where the winds are so much stronger. And that's what's able to get these flames to to fan out in other areas and for this fire to spread rapidly. National Weather Service is saying this is due to these fire clouds and this is a very dangerous situation. It's pushing the fire around and this is a textbook example of why these fire clouds can be so incredibly dangerous. We have seen this in the past. It's also so very hot out there. I mean, this heat, you guys, it has been so brutal for so many folks here in Southern California. We're at 104 degrees right now in Highland. In that area, though, especially within the fire, it is feeling so much hotter than that. On top of that, I mean, Gio mentioned how incredible this is. We're dealing with relative humidity that is very, very low right now. It's down to 16%. So everything is working together. It's windy in that area. You can see that relative humidity is down. 
visibility is down. That's because of the smoke right now. It's tough to see much of anything, and it's also very, very hot. We have red flag conditions in many areas. Red flag warning is not in place here, but we are dealing with critical fire weather, especially in this area because of this long duration heat wave. I mean, we can get hot days here and there, but when we are dealing with day after day after day with these triple digits, with these highs soaring, it makes things very, very dangerous. But again, the main cause of this fire flaming out so quickly is because of the weather that it is creating in that specific spot. So you can see on top of all that, if it's tough to see outside your home and you're near this area, it's because of the smoke from this wildfire. And you can see it hasn't spread too far into the Inland Empire quite yet. So we've got that really thick smoke right now. Those areas in purple, it's in red. It's for Running Springs, Big Bear Lake. A lot of this is up in the mountains. But look at what happens over the next 24 hours. I'm going to zoom you out and this is going to take you into Sunday morning. You can see because of the winds, this smoke is actually going to start to make its way into Rancho Cucamonga early Sunday morning into Pomona and Glendale. This is 7, 8 o'clock and then making its way all the way into the San Fernando Valley right there towards Malibu by Sunday afternoon. So you may be far away from the Inland Empire, but areas in the basin are going to start to see the smoke that's coming from the line fire. And this is going to be in combination with all the heat that we're seeing right now. This is going to make our air quality very, very bad. I mean, you saw where Lori is when we're dealing with smoke that's this thick and that purple. It's really tough to see anything. And this is the kind of smoke that is very, very dangerous out there. We have high ozone levels, and this is the kind of pollutant that leads to obviously the poor air quality, quality. but this is, could also impact people with asthma, uh, people that have trouble breathing. It could create lung damage. And so this is especially for uh, the sensitive groups like children, older adults, people who do have asthma um, that could be impacted by things like this. But when we are dealing with that darker color, I mean, that is indicating smoke that's very difficult um, for anybody, even if you're not in that sensitive group. On top of all this, you guys, I mean, we're hot everywhere right now. We're seeing that um, for everyone here in Southern California. It's not as hot as yesterday, but still for our standards, this is very, very dangerous. Areas like Riverside, San Bernardino, Claremont, still in the triple digits. Um, so I want to bring you over to our radar because we've been talking about the lightning strikes uh, that have been noticed in that area. And I want to pull up our radar to show you what we've been following in that area. And I'll zoom you in right now. It should be coming up in just a minute. Uh, here we go. We've got our live radar up right now. Um, let me zoom you in. Um, this is a look at the last hour. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to back this up to look at, let's say, the last five hours to see what has been happening in this area. And we are looking, um, wow, right there. Um, okay, this is going to pull through again for you guys. Over the last five hours, I'm zoomed in, um, and you can see for these areas uh, right there uh, east of Highland up in the mountains, um, we've got at least a dozen lightning strikes, and that doesn't mean that we're seeing rain in those areas. That is very um, indicative of what this fire has been creating. Uh, this has been creating, as we've been talking about, its own weather. Look at all those lightning strikes right there. And so when we're seeing something like this, we talk a lot about these, these lightning strikes when we're dealing with these dry thunderstorms. This is what very easily creates fires. It helps fires start. And when we're dealing with these hot conditions and with these winds, this is when it can just intensify and spread so rapidly. So this is showing us that right there in that area where the line fire is burning, we have seen lightning strikes out there. Folks in that area have said they've seen that. And this has been a big, big concern. And it's all because the fire is so hot and so intense that it's actually creating these clouds that we typically see with thunderstorms but the fire is actually creating these clouds and out of these clouds we can get these lightning strikes and we can also get these erratic outflow winds that help fan the flames and help spread this fire. So going into tonight, this is something we're watching, but as this fire continues, we're not getting much relief tonight. We could very well, unfortunately, um, see more of this developing going into tonight. Um, so this is again uh, just a really dangerous situation um, for anyone out there. Please, please stay safe. Um, we're going to be watching this very, very closely. But again, it's the fire that's able to create these conditions. You guys look at those lightning strikes that we're seeing over the last five hours. And that's because of what this fire is creating.
Danny, it's incredible what Mother Nature can do. And yeah. then you mix that in with the heat, and it just becomes a really dangerous and tough firefight for fire crews out there. As you're taking a live look there on the left side of your screen, it's wild to see this, Geo, because you can't even tell what time of day it is, right? Yeah. Because how much smoke is in that area and has covered this area here as you're taking a look at um, some flames that are racing up this hillside here. We know Highway 33 north of Highland. It's probably the most traveled highway to get up to that Big Bear Running Springs area. That is currently closed right now. Um, I do know that uh, something that's been impacting a lot of these crews up there, I was reading in uh, their, their reports, is some of that steep terrain and lack of access. If you go up in this area, you know it is pretty much all uh, lots of trees, brush, and you know, there's Highway 33 made mm -hmm. of two lanes in each direction for most of the way. So a lot of this is just nature around big trees. So it's hard for these crews to really make progress. And that's exactly why they need that air support out there. And we do know air support was grounded for some time because of a visibility yep. be some of those lightning strikes. And that's exactly the point there that I was going to pick up on mm -hmm. is the fact that you don't have that air support. So you pair that with an already difficult to attack fire from the ground and it makes it hard to establish fire lines. It makes it hard to attack it from and from any sort of angle, really, especially if you're trying to go uphill in many mm -hmm. cases. So uh, the fact that it's grown so quickly, you blend that in with the weather that we've been dealing with, that excessive heat for so many days on mm -hmm. top of the fact that we're going to be seeing it for a few more days on top of that. It's low humidity and uh, in those incident reports, those same incident reports they've been saying, they've been able to at least get some sort of help from slightly higher humidity at the nighttime yeah. hours uh, on top of it being slightly cooler, but that's all relative yeah. on top of the fact that it's not that humid right now to begin with yeah. and this heat that we see at night is already hotter than we typically see in those overnight hours. So yeah. it just makes it really, really difficult. And we're talking about a fire that started two days ago yep. now, right? Mm -hmm. And just yesterday it was sitting at about a thousand acres. Today it explodes in size. Mm -hmm. More than 7,000 acres, 0% uh, containment, and a whole lot of brush and fuel and trees to go through. Uh, this fire does have a lot of fuel in this area, but fire crews are doing all they can. In Lori's live shot, you saw some of those uh, tractor trailers that are used to make mm -hmm. some of those fire lines there on the ground. Um, I did look at a map and I saw at least one air support uh, I, I believe it was a fixed wing was flying in that mm -hmm. area. So it looks like they've been able to get uh, those fire firefighting um, choppers and fixed wings back up in the air. So hopefully those can start to make a difference. And as you mentioned, Gio, mm -hmm. night has been uh, truly a, a big help for these yep. fire crews. Just the humidity um, uh, through the night, they have really been able to attack this fire. Uh, in the middle of the difficulty of the fact that the wind, too, is playing a factor here, mm -hmm. and we know how that can easily make a fire jump and spread quickly, not to mention you see the zoomed out version of the shot. It's another emphasis to the point of just how much fire fuel there is for it to spread. There's so much green, there's so much there. Uh, the other thing to note on uh, Lori's live shot is just how fast it was spreading relative yeah. to her. That gives us a really good perspective. Uh, in terms of scale, because it's one thing to see it live from SkyCal and see the wide images and look at a map, but with Lori there, just within half an hour, she's had to move twice because mm -hmm. of how fast it was moving and officials telling her directly and her photographer, you guys need to move because this fire is about to overtake this position shortly. And just like that, it did. It did yeah. So it, it's, it, it highlights the significance of this on top of the fact that we know that there are, mo with all the evacuation orders and warnings mm -hmm. we've already read off to you in the last hour, that's a lot of people being affected. That's a lot yeah. of structures being threatened, a lot of homes that are, uh, are in, the, in the path of this fire potentially. And then on top of that is the air quality concern because even if you are not in these warnings or your order health. zones, that That's is something else because beyond. if you're just going outside or mm -hmm. have to take care of anything, that air quality we know can be so sensitive to so many people. And we can see uh, all that smoke heading right into the LA area. You know, we're miles away from Highland, but you can see it even in our area. And you are speaking about all the people affected. 
that number right now, nearly 500 homes under evacuation orders at this hour. There are several areas, several neighborhoods that we've been listing off in the last hour mm -hmm. here that are currently under an uh, evacuation order. Um, but if you are in this area and you do find yourself needing to leave your home, there is an evacuation shelter at Emanuel Baptist Church. That's at 28355 Baseline Street in Highland. Also, many, many people we know in this area do have larger properties and may need um, somewhere to take their animals. Um, an animal evacuation shelter has been set up at the Duval Vore Animal Shelter at 19777 Shelter Way in San Bernardino. And as we continue to move on through the rest of the evening, we know here on KCAL News, we'll keep, keep you updated on where the uh, line fire is going in terms of size. Uh, Leslie already mentioned the fact that it's at 0% containment at last check, so we can presume that it's going to keep growing in size, especially with all the factors that we listed off for you in terms of the heat, in terms of the terrain, the wind, everything else that is uh, the lack of air crews right now because of a lot of other things slowing them down. That's going to play a factor into how fast this fire continues to spread, already tripling in size in just the last 24 hours. So the hope is that it doesn't keep growing at that rate, but who's to say as we continue to monitor the situation. This is live again from SkyCal, and it's a different vantage point. You just saw the flames. Now you're seeing the smoke that is blanketing so much of this area. We also have Lori Perez uh, near the scene right now getting situated and trying to uh, give us a better vantage point from her view, as well as talking to people who are directly affected by this, because yeah. that is something else that we want to be able to highlight is that this is not just something that we're watching to watch. It's mm -hmm. just there's a lot of people that don't know if and when they're going to, going to be able to get back home because of how fast this is growing. Yeah, and something I find just absolutely um, magnificent and interesting in this is that this fire has exploded in size, creating really its own weather pattern in this area. We do want to get to Danny Roberti, who is tracking what we're seeing there. And Danny, it looks like um, at least one of those aircrafts have been able to get back in that area. You see it's hard to see, but it is yeah. flying there in the midst of all that smoke. Oh my goodness, it, it's just crazy to look at that. You can't see anything, you guys. Um, the smoke is so thick in this area. Uh, this line fire has been able to um, explode in size. Leslie mentioned it just a few minutes ago, but um, this fire is creating its own weather, its own localized weather in this area. And that's what's helped it to spread so rapidly. I mean, we are dealing with a very, very dangerous situation that we are tracking for you in the next weather center. Here's a look at our uh, active hotspots right now. It didn't look like this earlier today. I'm zooming you into that area where the line fire is burning. So this is just east of Highland and you can see all of the active hotspots right now and this has been able to explode because I mentioned this fire is actually able to create its own climate and it's because it's creating what's known as fire clouds. So here's a look at our live radar. I'm going to zoom you into that area. This is a look at the last four hours. Look at all the lightning strikes that we are seeing in this area. So we've had these pyrocumulonimbus clouds that have been able to form from the fire. I kind of want to slow this down for you and I'm going to actually stop in some areas. This is where the fire is burning. You can see um, at least a dozen lightning strikes. This was at around three o'clock this afternoon and then it continued. Um, a lot of folks out there have said that they have seen these lightning strikes. They've heard thunder and what we're actually dealing with right now, the fire gets so hot in that area that it's actually able to create these fire clouds. And it's very similar to the clouds that we see with thunderstorms. So if a fire burns hot enough, which this one is, it's very intense. It's very, very hot outside. We're, we're dealing with triple digits out there and it's been nonstop triple digit days. So it creates these clouds very much like a thunderstorm. And these are the kind of clouds that can produce lightning. They can produce rain. Uh, they can actually produce uh, a crazy erratic winds, outflow winds, which is what we saw today. We've been seeing the lightning strikes and we've also also been seeing these outflow winds and these are very powerful winds that come out of these thunderstorm clouds, these cumulonimbus clouds, 
And these clouds, or these uh, winds, I should say, are the winds that are able to fan these flames, and it's able to get this fire to spread as rapidly as it has. And National Weather Service um, has indicated that this is very well due to these fire clouds, uh, to these pyrocumulonimbus clouds. And this is a very dangerous situation. These clouds are able to create these outflow winds. And this is why the line fire has exploded. And this is why things um, are so incredibly dangerous in this area. I want to take a look at the conditions right now in Highland as well. So temperatures right now 102 degrees. It feels like 102 humidity. It's low. It's getting a little bit better. We're almost up to 20% still very dry for our standards and you can see not incredibly windy overall in Highland uh, winds are just coming out of the west 7 miles per hour gusts nearing 20 miles per hour. But within this fire, it's very localized uh, when we start to see the fire creating its own weather, creating these clouds, the winds are much stronger within that. And so that's uh, going to be the big concern going into tonight. And then we've also been talking about the smoke. This is a very dangerous smoke that we're dealing with, and it's the kind of smoke you can see on your screen in a lot of the shots that we're seeing. You can't see much of anything, and we are dealing with air quality alerts. And even if you are in the LA basin, we are going to be impacted by this smoke. Tomorrow is going to be one of those days where we're all starting to get in on this. So smoke right now is really focused in that area of Highland. We've got those winds coming out of the southwest. You can see it's a little bit smoky as well. We're definitely seeing that over in San Bernardino, over into Redlands, uh, areas uh, of Arrowhead into Highland, especially when you're seeing those reds. That's very much indicating that thick smoke that we're seeing. Now, I want to fast forward. I'm going to zoom you out. And this is going to take us through the next 24 hours. And here's a look at how that smoke moves. So you may not see a lot of thick smoke right now, but we are going to see that over the next 24 hours. Let me zoom you in Rancho Cucamonga by 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. And I'm going to bring you all the way over into Glendale into Los Angeles Sunday afternoon. Let me stay right there over the LA Basin. This is going to re, uh, reformat for you and show you how this smoke continues to move, making its way towards the west. This is early Sunday morning, uh, St. Gabriel Valley, 8 o'clock Sunday morning, and really Really, uh, areas of LA and Malibu starting to see this thicker smoke uh, later in the morning on Sunday. And so actually a, a lot of us here in Southern California were under this air quality alert. Uh, this is going to be in place until Monday night, and this is all due to the wildfire smoke that we are seeing in this area. Um, and this is going to continue again until Monday night, um, and this is increasing our air pollution. So for folks that may have um, uh, asthma that may have trouble breathing, who's sensitive to this kind of stuff, the elderly for children. It's going to be very difficult spending time outside. It's been very, very hot, and now our air quality is not looking good. This includes the Inland Empire. This includes parts of Orange County, Inland Orange County, areas like Anaheim into Mission Viejo over towards Ladera Ranch, and then also for a lot of LA County, Long Beach included in this, Los Angeles, San Gabriel Valley, all the way into the San Fernando Valley. Conditions are hot right now, and here's the thing, the concern is that we're not going to see things cooling down um, going into tomorrow. Couple degrees cooler, but we've been dealing with a significant, very, very brutal heat wave here in Southern California. So for areas of Highland, Things are going to stay hot over the next couple days. We're going to see another day in the triple digits going into our Sunday. Close to that again on Monday. We don't get too much relief at night. We're going to see overnights in the 70s and 80s again. So a couple more days of this brutal, intense heat. And finally by Tuesday, that's the day I've got my eye on. That's when we're finally going to start to see this high pressure moving away. Things start to cool down. We're actually going to start to see more clouds as well. Uh, so please stay with us. We're continuing to track the dangers, the evacuations, the fire fight and the weather with the lime fire uh, that's coming up in just a couple minutes. KCAL News at six starts right now. Well, next on KCAL News on CBS Los Angeles, breaking news, the line fire in San Bernardino County exploding in size and forcing new evacuation orders in Highland and Running Springs. Plus new video from the fire line showing extreme fire behavior, those flames tearing through dry hillsides and the weather complicating the firefight. 
And now at 6, we do begin with breaking news. The line fire birdie in San Bernardino has tripled in size in just 24 hours and is forcing new evacuation orders. Right now, that fire is at more than 7,000 acres, prompting evacuation orders in Running Springs and parts of Highland. The flames so intense, the fire is creating its own weather. We have team coverage for you tonight, starting with KCAL News reporter Lori Perez, live along Highway 330 north of Highland. Lori. Hi guys, I want to show get to you, uh, show you right away. See these guys? These are hand crews that are heading down into these mountains. Uh, they're carrying all sorts of equipment, including, of course, axes and all sorts of protective equipment. It is very hot here. They have a very big job ahead of them. Um, uh, you know, I did say good luck as they were going down there, and they just kind of looked resigned and and. Uh, confident as they head off into that. I want to show behind me uh, where we were. I mentioned this before. Uh, we were behind us where you can see the curve in the road there. Just about an hour ago, we were standing there and we were watching the flames on the far side of the road. We were getting video of that when a fire official said, you got to get out of here because this is going to uh, be engulfed in five minutes. And sure enough, we can now see that is gone. The fire has jumped the 330 and all along this hillside now all the way up to the left you can see the fire and the flames uh the smoke really blocking uh what you can see in terms of flames at this point but uh, we can see how quickly this is moving these flames are just devouring these hillsides uh very quickly you know danny has been talking so much about how many lightning strikes you all can see we cannot see them but i can tell you we can hear that thunder that she's been mentioning uh it's disconcerting because when you don't see lightning and you don't see rain and you hear this tremendous thunder, you know, it seems out of place. Her explanation, of course, clearing that up, that the heat of this fire is creating its own weather system. These flames have uh, just been engulfing this area since we arrived and uh, where we are, we're going to spin around actually, Greg, let's spin around and show across the street. There are lots of fire crews set up across the street with all sorts of equipment. Um, and they are standing by here because they do believe that the fire is eventually going to come down to where we are. That's how far they expect it to come, and that's how quickly they expect it to come. So they are standing by. Oh, I just stopped because I wanted you to see if you could hear that. That's some of that thunder that we keep hearing. Uh, but this has really been something to watch. Again, a tremendous amount of smoke uh, being created here. Uh, it's really difficult to see anything. And, uh, you know, it, the breathing is not the greatest. Um, this crew, again, over here to the right, um, getting some directions and instructions uh, before they head down into the firefight on the ground here. Uh, a crew of about 10 guys ready uh, to head into the hills here and, and start stop any, everything that they can or prevent it from going um, any further. A, tr a really difficult job, a really great job um, that they will have to do tonight. Uh, but we are standing by here. We do want to eventually leave this area and get down to uh, talk to some of the people who we understand have been evacuated. No doubt this smoke is engulfing uh, the downtown area that we just came up from. Everybody, of course, aware that this is happening. We want to see how people who have had to move out of their homes are doing. We want to see how they are doing as they have moved out with their families and their animals um, and are watching all of these smoke and, and these flames in this distance. It has to be a very anxious time for many people in this area. We do understand that the 330, where we are situated off of, is now closed. You cannot get to Running Springs this way, so you have to go around. It's it's turned into several hours of a trip, uh, but not certainly anywhere that you want to be going because there is such a fire risk at this point. Uh, for now, we're going to send it back to you guys. Lori, thank you. And we know about 500 homes under evacuation at this hour. We want to get to Mara Rodriguez, public information officer for the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Office. Well, Mara, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, first off, can you hear us all right? I can. Thank you so much for having us tonight. Thank you for giving us some of that time. And uh, we want to know, first off, do we have any updates when it comes to evacuation orders, warnings? We've been running through them in the last hour, but we want to know if there's any new additions to that list. Yeah, so just in the last hour, um, we have had the communities of Running Springs and Arrow Bear Lake now under an evacuation order. So that joins the other evacuation orders and warnings that we've had throughout the day. 
We also know that Highway 33 is closed at this hour. Um, can you tell us what way people are being maybe rerouted there? Um, you know, I don't have complete updates on exactly how they're being routed. I do know that that is closed from Highway 18 um, at the top all the way to 210 at the bottom. So, you know, folks are going to have to try to, to find a way around there. And there, there are plenty of um, law enforcement and fire personnel there to help guide them through if they need to get up there. Right now on the screen, we have video from earlier showing just the intense flames burning through so much brush, so, so many things that can fuel this fire. We know weather is impacting the response. How much is weather impacting the response? And should we be expecting, given what we've seen so far, a rapid growth in the size of this fire? You know, um, to tell you the truth, that's probably a question better asked um, to the fire and uh, fire department and the guys out there working that. Um, we, we've got our hands full with all the evacuations, and so I'm going to mm -hmm. let them use their expertise to answer those questions for you. You know, there are several different areas under evacuation right now. As you said, those latest areas being Running Springs as well as the Arrow Bear Lake area. Uh, where are people being sent at this time, and what about people who may have animals? Yeah, so um, currently we have uh, shelters have been set up at the Emanuel Baptist Church in Highland on baseline. Um, as far as animals are concerned, they have animal care and control there at that church, and they're helping folks, um, guiding them to where they might be able to take those animals. Um, at this time, in regards to the communities of Running Springs and Arrow Bear Lake, I'm awaiting some information to see if there's going to be some additional shelters set up for those people and those animals that are being displaced right now. Uh, Mara, there was something else that caught my eye earlier within the last hour that I think is worth pointing out to viewers so far. This was a post by Cal Fire saying that yesterday on the line fire, there were two separate drone incursions into the fire area, and they were just warning people to not do that sort of thing because of how significantly it could impact the response and the dangers that that could pose. Uh, uh, first off, I want to say you have not been seeing any of that today, and just how important is it to sort of avoid doing anything like that in this particular situation? Yeah, I haven't been aware, made aware of any of those um, drone issues today. We did put out some warnings um, over the last day or so, letting people know how that affects and um, affects the firefighting efforts. And any time that you're going to have something up in the air, you're going to have issues when you have people flying drones. It just causes so much interruption and interference, and not to, ma not to mention it's a danger. If, if they should crash that drone, then we've got some more issues that we're having to deal with there. Um, the smallest thing could spark additional fire, so it's just bad news all around. Yeah, and I, I want to talk about, Mara, what some of your uh, deputies may be encountering out there when we're, they're asking people to evacuate their homes. Are most people leaving? Are they listening and adhering to the advice of deputies? Yeah, so we have more folks that are definitely choosing to leave their homes than we have staying. Um, so... It, Obviously, as you can see from your live crews out there, this is a horrendous fire. There is a lot going on. The smoke is horrible to ash. The flames themselves are so visible. So I think that that's really gotten people's attention. And so, yeah, we aren't really running into many issues. And we're really encouraging folks to listen as we come through, whether it's, you know, our high-low um, units coming through with the sirens and the um, announcements or deputy knocking at their door. This is a big deal. We need people to really get out of there. Well, a quick follow up to that point, because you mentioned the smoke, you mentioned the ash and just how intense it is. It's one thing to see it on the video that we've been showing uh, folks at home right now. But uh, in, in terms of emphasizing just how significant that is, if you want to, uh, are there any extra points you can add about what, how it's affecting crews or yourself or anybody else there in the area? Uh, because it, it's certainly different to see it on screen versus hearing it from someone who is directly dealing with such intense flames and smoke. Yeah, certainly. I mean, there's there's definitely a reason that the fire crews wear so much protective gear. That is so incredibly dangerous for your lungs, for your eyes, for everything. You know, you're not going to get out of there without having some kind of effects from that. Um, so our deputies are out there. A lot of them are, are choosing to wear some type of a face mask if they're having to be out exposed to that long term. Um, so it's, it's incredibly dangerous and, and uncomfortable, if nothing else, for sure. 
And Mara, you know, we know uh, this fire has just exploded in size 24 hours ago. It was just over a thousand acres. Now it sits at 7,000 acres. Can you talk about what people may may need to be gathering up right now that haven't been ordered to leave their homes but are under these warm? ready to go and we always hear how important it is to grab your important paperwork hopefully people already have that in one safe place get that together get all of those things together in your go bag if you will um, make sure you take some water with you just to be safe just in case you can't get to anything like that um, quickly make sure that you're prepared you know um, light light blankets um, your clothing, your shoes, make sure you have safe shoes, boots, or closed-toed shoes, all of those things that we keep getting um, told about over and over again, and we just never seem to quite get it together. And how long should people, you know, you never want to evacuate in a situation like this, and you hope if you have to, it's only for, you know, a couple of days at most, but how long should people be preparing for in the worst type of case scenario? Should it be a week? Should it be, what, what sort of number do they need to keep in mind, just in case? Yeah, I think if, if people can swing it, if they can have a week's worth of belongings and important items with them, that's fantastic. At the very least, they need to be um, planning for at least three days out of their homes. And Mari, I know you can only speak for the Sheriff's Department there, but are, are you hearing anything about any injuries, any structures being threatened at this hour? I haven't heard anything um, recently about any of that so far. Luckily, I haven't heard that we've had any injuries or structures that have been lost. But this is such a fluid situation. Things have changed so quickly in the last hour. So something we're definitely mm -hmm. keeping an eye on. And I know, you know, this does remain under investigation started about two days ago. But is there anything that um, the Sheriff's Department is currently investigating on what may have started this fire? Um, you know, that's, that's going to be the fire investigators looking into that. We'll assist anywhere that we need to with them. But for now, that's going to be up to the fire investigators. Mara, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate all the help. And, of course, stay safe to you and the crews out there as well. Thank you very, so much. And as we've been telling you throughout the evening, the blaze actually creating its own weather system. Yeah, let's bring in Danny Roberti now with fire front conditions. Danny, it's incredible the way this fire has really acted and created its own weather mm -hmm. system. Yeah, I mean, it can get so hot, you guys, that it creates these uh, kind of localized patterns right there. We're going to talk a little bit about this, but it's a, a very dangerous situation that we are dealing with with this lime fire. You can see all of the active hotspots that we're following right now. I mean, it has exploded in size today and Leslie and Gio mentioned it this fire is actually creating its own weather and you're probably wondering how does it do that well as I zoom you in you can see right there where the line fire is burning you can see dozens of lightning strikes folks have been talking about the lightning strikes that we've been seeing we're not getting rain in this area but what happens is this fire right there where the line fire was burning it gets so hot it gets so intense that it shoots this hot air up into the atmosphere atmosphere and it creates these fire clouds. They're known as pyrocumulonimbus clouds and it's very similar to the clouds that we see with a thunderstorm but it's created from the heat of this fire and so these fire clouds they can create lightning strikes they can create rain and they can also create these gusty outflow winds and that's exactly what we've seen today. We've got the lightning strikes out there and we've also seen these erratic winds and this is exactly what's helping to fan these flames and what's helping to what's allowing this fire really to spread so rapidly. So let's take a look at our conditions right now in Highland. 102 degrees, but locally within that fire, it is so much hotter. We're also dealing with very low relative humidity. And for Highland, the winds are not that strong right now. But as we start to notice these fire clouds developing, and I've actually been monitoring Twitter, and I've seen some folks posting videos of these clouds that almost look like they are exploding up into the stratosphere. They are so 
so tall and they look so ominous uh, that these clouds are actually able to create gustier winds within the fire right there. So you might be miles away and it may not be really windy, really gusty, but right there where the lime fire is burning, those gusts, they pick up the outflow winds, they get stronger, and this is what's able to fan these flames. So again, we're dealing with the heat, and this has been the case day after day. We are in a brutal, significant heat wave here in Southern California. We have not gotten a break from the heat, and so this has been part of the problem. We've been talking about that in the next Weather Center uh, earlier this week, that fire conditions, they were going to be critical. We've been dealing with red flag warnings for our L.A. County, Ventura County Mountains, and now for San Bernardino County. You can see even though we're not under red flag uh, warnings, we are dealing with all the ingredients that create these very terrible, dangerous conditions that we are seeing with this fire. On top of that, you can see in the video on your screen right now, it's tough to see much of anything right now, and that's because we are dealing with this really intense smoke. It is very, very thick out there. Let me zoom you in. The areas where you see the reds, the yellows, the purples, this is where we are dealing with the thickest smoke. So you can see that mainly up in the mountains, but really over the last 30 minutes, I've noticed things are getting worse for folks in San Bernardino. So now we're starting to see that smoke thicken up and it's actually starting to push. It's going to start to move because of the way the winds are moving. And this is actually going to make its way into areas of the San Gabriel Valley, the San Fernando Valley overnight into tomorrow morning, even into downtown Los Angeles. And a lot of us, we are all under air quality alerts. Here's a look at the next 24 hours. You can see how that smoke is moving into Rancho Cucamonga. Sunday, 8 o'clock in the morning, this is making its way into the San Gabriel Valley. And then look into Los Angeles right before we get to the lunch hour. So even if you are miles and miles away from this fire, we're all going to start to see the impacts of it because of how the smoke is moving. Air quality alerts are in effect until Monday night. All these areas shaded in that kind of light gray and light purple. This is all due to wildfire smoke. So the air is not good right now. We're going to start to notice the thick, uh, the smoke. It's going to be thick out there. And it's not just for the Inland Empire. Look, we've got areas of Orange County included in this. We've got the San Gabriel Valley, San Fernando Valley. Uh, most of our mountain communities into Los Angeles. We've got Anaheim, Santa Ana, Mission Viejo. So a lot of us are going to start to notice this smoke moving over the next 24 hours. And this is in place until Monday night. So we're dealing with the smoke. We're dealing with the heat. We're also dealing with these really dry conditions. So especially in that area uh, where the line fire is burning right now, we could continue to see going into tonight uh, with the way that this fire is behaving. We could uh, very easily continue to see uh, uh, this fire creating more of its own weather. So we could see more of these clouds, more of these lightning strikes, and more of these outflow winds. And this is what's making things um, very, very difficult for firefighters out there. Again, a, a very dangerous situation that we're watching. You can see, even at this hour, I mean, it's 618, 620, we're almost to 630, an hour away from sunset, and we are still at 104 degrees over in San Bernardino. So we are still talking triple digits in these areas. 100 in Burbank, 102 in Santa Clarita. So everyone's dealing with the heat and as we go into tonight we don't get much relief it's going to be another one of those nights where we only have overnight lows down to the 70s down to the 80s tomorrow is going to be a very hot day another warm one on monday but we're finally going to start to see some changes on tuesday until then though we are holding on to the heat red flag warnings are set to expire tonight we'll keep a very close eye on that because they may continue going into tomorrow excessive heat warnings are still in place so we will continue to monitor these conditions before we're Right now, it's hot and, again, a very dangerous kind of dire situation that we're dealing with uh, over in the line fire with these gusty winds that have been developing, you guys. Danny, thank you. On that note, we want to take a look at the evacuation map now. The evacuation center we've been noting for the last hour or so is Emmanuel Baptist Church. That's at 28355 Baseline Street in Highland. And the evacuation orders will run through them for you. The first one is areas of Running Spring east of Highway 330 and south of Highway 18. The area from Calle del Rio to Highway 38, including Greenspot Road north. All underdeveloped land east of Highway 330 to Summer Trail Place and north of Highland Avenue uh, as well of a couple other ones. But we'll get to the warnings here. And it, it's really hard to make out this map here if you haven't seen this before. But the areas all under an evacuation order, I believe, are all marked in red here. The ones in warnings will be at the bottom of your screen towards the yellow. And the warnings are currently right now neighborhoods east of Church Street, north of Highland Avenue, neighborhoods east of Weaver, north of 
green spot to the iron bridge. And a couple of other evacuation orders to list off uh, that we didn't mention initially were the communities of Running Springs and Arrow mm -hmm. Bear Lake. Those are under an evacuation order as well as the area east of Orchard Road to Clover Hill from Highland Ave North to the Foothill. So those are the extra two that actually just got added within the yeah. last hour or so. It's important to know. Yeah, those are very large communities there. And of course, the 330 does remain closed in both directions. So you'll have to detour your way around if you're trying to get up or down the mountain right now. Uh, but we do want to get a live look from the Bald Eagle Nest camera. This is in the Big Bear area. These are those uh, bald eagles that many of us watch there, uh, Jackie and Shadow. And you can see in this area, it overlooks the Big Bear Lake there. You can see it is smoky. It is hazy over the lake at this hour. It really looks cloudy, but a lot mm -hmm. of that is all that smoke that is pushing up into the Big Bear area. Um, right now. So it's incredible to get a look from what people are seeing in Big Bear as uh, many of those people, you know, it's it's still miles away, mm -hmm. but they can see it and I, you know, they can probably smell it as yep. well, Gio. And feel it because we know when the air quality starts dipping, that affects, you know, those of us who are sensitive, everything else, even if you just have to go outside, it's quite a lot to deal with. We want to update you now as uh, in case you're just joining us, but it's a lot going on with the line fire right now, starting just a couple of days ago, but now now upwards of 7,000 acres, 0% containment at last check. These are the updates we've been following for you in the last couple of hours. <clears throat> Excuse me, we just ran through the evacuation orders, the evacuation warnings, but weather playing a significant factor in this because it keeps growing by the hour. Our Lori Perez is live on the scene down there trying to stay safe, but also trying mm -hmm. to talk to people who are nearby. That includes crews, that includes folks who are impacted, who have been evacuated. It's just a lot going on because this is video where you see the intense flames, the smoke, the haziness, and to Leslie's point from earlier, you can not even tell really what time of the day it is, mm -hmm. given the color of the screen, the color of the sky, and the intense, the intensity of this fire to the point where, as Danny pointed out, it's creating its own weather system. So that's the level of which we're talking about right now, especially considering just how fast it's grown in the last 24 hours and how it looks like it will continue to grow, given that it's hard to get a containment level on this one right now. And we've talked about the fact that this fire, the line fire, started two days ago, just 24 hours ago. It was hovering around 1,000 acres there. Uh, fire crews did say through the night they were able to make uh, some progress due to the higher humidity and nighttime water drops. How helicopters um, that are in that area. But since then, it has completely exploded in size, hovering now about 7,000 acres, 0% containment at this hour. We know at one point, air support had to ground for some time because there were lightning strikes in that area, and the visibility was just too harsh for these mm -hmm. aircrafts to uh, safely get up and fight this fire from the air. But as we saw in Lori's live shot, there are mm -hmm. ground crews out there getting awfully close to these flames, trying to do what they can um, to just cut fire lines in these very steep mountainous areas. That has been one of the biggest challenge for firefighters yep. is this, this terrain is steep and there's a lack of access mm -hmm. um, for these crews because there's just no roadways there. And when you factor in the point of lack of air support or significant air support because of the weather, because of everything else that's going on there, firefighters on the ground, according to Cal Fire, will continue to be supported by that fixed wing and rotary aircraft, so they're not completely helpless in this situation. But take mm -hmm. a look at this uh, from uh, Skycam. It's just, it, there's a lot. You notice the smoke coming in left to right over the screen. The intensity of it is hard to ignore. And it, right there, it's taking, it's overtaking essentially the screen. It looks like it's live footage from there uh, right now. It's just unbelievable to look at. And that's yeah. a word we've been saying often that just, Wow, is yeah, you, all you can really say. You sometimes. see this time lapse and just uh, how over time um, you can see the sky there, right, Gio? Mm -hmm. And then over time, it completely takes over the entire camera. This here, they're, they're fire cameras, which use AI technology to track wildfires across the state. This one tracking here, um, the line fire. But if you're in this area or even remotely near the Highland Running Springs area, you probably can see 
uh, and feel and smell this very heavy smoke. Uh, it just completely has taken over this area and many times that smoke of course um, billows out to all the rest mm -hmm. of us. So a lot of people across the Inland Empire, San Bernardino County area, Riverside County area um, can probably uh, see and smell this smoke here. This is another fire camera in that area and take a look. You can see what looks like possibly uh, it, rain on uh, perhaps some ash. Even. Ash, yeah. yeah. It, it, between ash or rain, we can't really m mm -hmm. make it out here, um, but you can see that uh, just filling the lens there. Right, and it looks like rain now as it continues to lapse there. But on top of all of this, there's the fact that Leslie mentioned the steep terrain, the difficult access for crews and trying to get a handle on this fire. But you have the excessive heat. You have the lack of humidity. You have wind. Danny, as we bring you back in on all of this, you mentioned it earlier that it's really all these factors sort of conspiring together. And it, it, it's, it's the worst case scenario of having all of these things work against you when it comes to fighting a fire of this size. Oh, yeah, you guys, I mean, this this heat wave that we've been in the midst of, it has been so incredibly brutal, you guys. Uh, we've been dealing with the heat, and Gio's exactly right. It's the combination of all these things. It's the heat. We've got the wind today. Uh, on top of that, we've got this fire that's creating its own weather. I want to look ahead in your next weather to what conditions are looking like in Highland. And then I want to talk a little bit more about what we're seeing right now with the fire. So you can see over the next four hours, not much relief in terms of the temperature. So this is in Highland. So this is just a little bit east of where the line fire, excuse me, a little bit west of where the line fire is burning. Uh, we're talking upper 90s, 7 o'clock, holding on to the 90s till 10 o'clock, 80s by, uh, yeah, around. 10 o'clock going into tomorrow morning or really only dropping uh, into the 80s, maybe even into the 70s. Now you're going to notice down here our winds, they're very, very light, but that is not the case within the fire. And that's because the fire is creating, we've been talking about it, its own weather. And this is something that we see. Uh, this is when we uh, see the heat from this fire. It is so intense. It gets so hot within the fire. Here it is right here. We're at 102 degrees in Highland. But what the fire does it creates clouds very similar to thunderstorms. And so we have the fire that's radiating all this heat. It shoots up into the atmosphere and it creates these clouds that we see with thunderstorms. They're called pyrocumulonimbus clouds. They're also known as fire clouds. And so what these clouds do as the, the fire creates these is it can create lightning strikes. It can create fire tornadoes. We've seen that in fires in California. It can create rain and it can also create the winds. And that's what we don't want to see when we're dealing with a fire like this is these winds are able to fan the flames and this is what helps it to explode to the level. This is why we are dealing with a very dangerous situation and this is what makes it so very intense. So here's the fire right now. We're at 102 degrees within the fire, much warmer. Winds don't look that strong, gusts up to 18 miles per hour, but especially within that fire when we start to see these outflow winds, these are winds that come from thunderstorm clouds. Well, these are coming from these fire clouds. They shoot down, they fan out and this is what's causing these really big concerns. Relative humidity is down to about 19%, a little bit better than an hour ago. Now I want to fast forward. Here's a look at our active hotspots right now. Was not looking like this earlier today, but as I uh, take us over to our live radar, I want to uh, give you an updated look um, at what we've seen. This is a look at the last four hours. I backed it up so we can see what's been happening because a big question was, you know, we can't really see much of anything when we're in this fire, but our radar is able to pick up on the lightning strikes that we're seeing. And a big concern when we have um, some of these dry thunderstorms and we talk about it, it's the fact that we get these lightning strikes without the rain. And this is kind of the bad combination. And you can see all of that lightning that we've seen over the last four hours. And this has been a concern. This is something that could have very well been produced from these fire clouds that have developed from the line fire. It creates its own weather, its own localized weather that we're not seeing everywhere else. And on top of that, we have been talking about the smoke, taking a look at that. It's starting to make its way into San Bernardino. So if you're in this area right here, San Bernardino, you're starting to notice this thick smoke. And this is what makes it really hard to see and really hard to be outside. I want to zoom into some areas right now. Riverside starting to see that. Beaumont, we can see that in Moreno Valley. Montana also seeing that and over the next 24 hours, look at how this smoke starts to move, making its way into our valleys, into the San Gabriel Valley, San Fernando Valley, all the way into Los Angeles by Sunday before the lunch hour. So you may be miles away, but you're still seeing this. We'll continue to track this for you coming up next.
Okay, uh, Danny, we're going to get off on for our CBS viewers. We're going to get off here, but we're going to continue on KCAL News. Uh, well, you can join us there right now, or we'll see you again at 11 p.m. Um, but for now, we are tracking this breaking news here on KCAL. Uh, the line mm -hmm. fire that has exploded three times its size to now 7,000 acres. Yeah, something we've been monitoring for the last 48 hours, essentially, when the fire first started, taking a view out of a time-lapse camera that uses AI technology to track track these wildfires notice the intensity of the smoke as it overtakes the screen that is just one piece uh, uh, of a greater slice that we've been seeing of ground footage sky cow footage weather cam footage all of that sort of blending together to give you a better perspective as to what's going on right now as leslie mentioned more than 7,000 acres last check zero percent containment so mm -hmm. far on this fire we've been checking in with officials uh left and right including the pio in the last hour of uh the san bernardino county sheriff there right now in terms of evacuation orders evacuation warnings a lot more orders than warnings that have exploded in the last hour to really put to perspective just how many people are dealing with this fire right now. You mentioned mm -hmm. about 500 homes under evacuation orders so at this it, hour. It's it's a lot to deal with right now and the weather not playing uh, not being much help, really, in that sense, when it comes to keeping this uh, firefight going. And we'll get to Danny in a, in a few moments here, but she spoke about this fire um, becoming so hot, so large that it was able to essentially create its own weather pattern. We've seen lightning strikes in the area that have grounded air support there for some time. Um, it, it, we are working to situate ourselves here as uh, we continue our coverage here on KCAL, but uh, producer, if you can hear me, I'm hoping we can get the evacuation order map up again um, when we get a moment just to give people the very latest on those evacuation orders and evacuation warnings. We know if you have been evacuated from your home or uh, you feel like this fire is getting close and, and you're thinking about leaving voluntarily, uh, right now the Emanuel Baptist Church is the evacuation shelter for anyone that needs to leave. That's at 28355 Baseline Street in Highland and this year is what I was talking about, mm -hmm. Geo. This here is the evacuation order and warning map. And we'll run through them for you, but a reminder, because sometimes there can be some general confusion when it comes to evacuation orders versus warnings. The orders are an immediate threat to life. That means that is an order by law enforcement to leave immediately, grab whatever you need to, the area lawfully close to public access. So uh, typically that would be the red lines here. Those are the evacuation orders with the warnings being in yellow. But we'll run through them for you right here. The area from Calle del Rio to High Highway 38, including Green Spot Road North, that is one evacuation order. The rest include areas of Running Spring east of Highway 330 and south of Highway 18, as well as all underdeveloped land east of Highway 330 to Summer Trail Place and north of Highland Ave. Now, in the last hour to hour and a half or so, they have also included the communities of Running Springs and Arrow Bear mm -hmm. Lake. Those are under an evacuation warning, warning or order. I, I apologize, an evacuation order, as well as the area east of Orchard Road to Clover hill from Highland Ave north to the foothill. So all of those are the evacuation orders by the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department as of right now. If that changes, we'll keep you posted. And right now we know Highway 330, that's really the most traveled highway to get up and down the mountain into that Running Springs area, even into the Big Bear area. Um, that remains currently closed, so people will have to use another route there, like the 18 possibly, uh, to get down, especially those in the Running Springs community um, that do remain evacuated. Gio, I'm looking at mm -hmm. video here from uh, one of the Running Springs live cameras there, and it's showing a lot of traffic. We know mm -hmm. if you've been to this Running Springs area, it's a mountain community made of about 5,000 people, but uh, through that area, uh, the, the roads are very narrow there, and in most, most of uh, the highway there, it's just two lanes. Um, going in both directions. Yep. So when you're being told to evacuate your home, getting off the mountain becomes uh, rather difficult because of so many people trying yep. to leave at so much time yep. and it's such a windy road as yep. well. And so constricting, obviously. Mm -hmm. it, you know, obviously better to leave if you have to than to stay, but that highlights just the difficulty of the situation right now. When we were talking with the PIO earlier, mentioning that you, you, know, you always have to be prepared for these situations. <laughs> you know that you have to gather your clothes, documents, medicine, that mm -hmm. if in a best 
case scenario, if you can, a week's worth would be best. If not, at least prepare for three days worth. And that, that's especially notable right now, given the fact that since we started our coverage on this fire here today, the note that's been the most striking, aside from the live video and from everything we've been showing you that has been nothing short of just unbelievable video is the fact that it's tripled in size and the fact that it, there has been no progress on containment numbers. That's not to say the crews are certainly not trying. They are, we've been seeing it firsthand, mm -hmm. but the weather has been limiting a lot from the air and it's been limiting a lot from the ground because you notice that it is very difficult, difficult to get in and around this terrain. So it adds to what is an already seemingly impossible um, firefight on top of the fact that 7,000 acres plus right now Typically in these situations, when you factor in everything that we've been running you through, it's unfortunate to say that it is likely going to continue growing in size. So that means more and more people become at risk, more and more homes, structures become at risk, and it makes leaving that much more important. So just keep an eye on those evacuation orders and warnings as we run you through them, because this is uh, not, we're not taking this lightly. And we do have our reporter, reporter Lori Perez out there right now. Lori, can you tell us where you are? Have you moved there since we last saw you? We actually did not move because there seemed to be so much activity uh, here, so we decided to stay to keep an eye on it. And I want to tell you, uh, the conditions have really changed in the last half hour. It does seem to be uh, getting cooler. The temperature does seem to be dropping, which is great, except for the fact that now it is significantly more windy, which is a bad uh, sign for these flames and this fire that continues to grow. I want to show you behind us uh, several spots that have really flared up in just the last few seconds. Uh, things are really erupting here in the mountains again and we've seen that in the time that we've been here it will seem as if things temper down and then all of a sudden there will be an eruption in several spots and this is all throughout these hills now behind us uh, you can look in the distance and all over we see little spots of flames which of course up close I'm sure are quite uh, enormous and large but just speaking to how much ground this fire is covering and how much it has moved I will uh, repeat the story of again we were up uh, by that cell phone tower you might be able to see that there's a bend in the road there we were situated there where we were able to see the flames on one side of the 330 freeway or highway and um, that's where we were when a fire official came and told us you need to leave now this will be engulfed within five minutes and sure enough it certainly was and now where those flames are that's almost exactly where we were standing and then it has hopped the road and gone up into the hills on the other side again uh, Danny was talking about the weather the atmosphere that these fires are creating we have not seen the lightning as you all have been able to see from some aerial shots but we have certainly been hearing the thunder which is so disconcerting because we don't see the lightning we don't see any rain but you just hear these tremendous uh, roars of thunder which is really crazy to hear additionally i've spoken about how loud this fire is when we were closer to it and even from where we are standing we can hear the roaring fire it really as i've described it earlier sounds like a waterfall that's how big and uh you know aggressive this fire is burning uh, you can see how much smoke engulfs these mountains and is certainly all into the town down in Highland and into the evacuation areas, uh, cr certainly creating probably uh, some breathing respiratory issues for anyone who is sensitive to that. You can certainly see why they pe want people to pay attention to those evacuation orders because this fire is moving quickly and it does not seem to be halting. Uh, it's been something to watch over the last hour as we have been here. Fire crews are set up across the street um, behind my photographer. Uh, they are on standby because they are anticipating even more movement in these flames to come and descend down towards where we are. Uh, we're mindful of that, of course, and we're ready to go uh, should that happen. And they are keeping us alert to the uh, behavior of this fire so that everyone stays safe but really uh, a really dynamic fire at this point lots to watch and we will be watching it for you guys back to you Lori thank you so much and of course stay safe that is the number one priority uh, as we move on to the weather because we've given you the vantage point there from the ground now mm -hmm. we've been talking about that intense heat Danny and yeah. we notice the map behind you as so many hot spots a lot going on right now and it's not making the firefight easier no no it's not you guys this is a very dangerous situation that we're dealing with uh, with the line fire right now you can see 
all of these active hotspots. It did not look like this earlier. This fire exploded. It spread rapidly, and that's because we've been talking about it. This fire is actually creating its own weather. It's creating these clouds that help this spread, and I want to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, Lori mentioned that she hasn't really been able to see from the ground those lightning strikes, and when you can't see it through the smoke, but I'm going to zoom you in. This is above that. Our radar is actually able to monitor and show us the lightning strikes that we've seen, and they have developed. This is a look over the last four hours, and you can see dozens of lightning strikes uh, right there uh, east of Highland in that area where the line fire is burning right now. And what this does, I mean, it's really wild that fires are able to do this and how they behave, but it gets so hot within the fire. We've been in the midst of this brutal, significant heat wave. Temperatures heat up like crazy, and this fire is actually able to create its own uh, fire clouds that can create lightning. It can create fire tornadoes. It can create these gusty, erratic outflow winds. And so that's what we saw today. This fire has warmed up. We have this hot air. It's shooting up into the atmosphere, and it creates these clouds that are very, very similar to the clouds that we typically see with thunderstorms. We call them pyrocumulonimbus clouds, and these clouds are what's creating, first of all, the lightning strikes that you saw. But on top of that, we've seen these outflow winds, and that's exactly what we don't want to see when we're dealing with a fire like this because it's able to help this fire spread so quickly, and it's helping uh, to create these other hot spots that we're seeing, and it's helping it uh, to move very, very fast and to intensify. On top of that, we're dealing with these really, really hot conditions, you guys. I mean, this has been brutal over the past couple days. This heat has been relentless here in Southern California, and specifically in the Inland Empire. We've been talking about over the last couple days the critical fire danger and the concerns for fires to start and not just start, but to also spread rapidly because of this heat. On top of that, we've been dealing with winds in some of these areas, especially up in the mountains. But here over in Highland, we've got winds gusts nearing 20 miles per hour. Now, that might not sound like a lot, but especially within this fire, because it's creating its own weather, we are looking at localized, stronger winds and wind gusts because the fire is able to create that. So very, very hot. We've been dealing with very low relative humidity. Things have been fairly dry. Uh, we have had some of this monsoonal moisture that's been moving in, but it's been so dry at the surface level that it's really not helping things out. And on top of all that, looking at your screen, you can see visually how hard it is to see. And here along our smoke forecast in your next weather, you can also see the thick smoke that we are monitoring in that area. And it's not just up in the mountains. At this point, the smoke is starting to move. It's making its way into portions of the Inland Empire. So right now, Sam Bernardino is starting to see some of this. I'm going to uh, step out of the way so I can zoom you into a couple different areas. The thickest smoke, the densest, it's going to be in those areas of purple, but it's especially noticeable when you're seeing those reds. So San Bernardino, we've got that over in Fontana, High Grove, Riverside is going to start to see it because the smoke is actually going to start to make its way West, And this is why a lot of us here in Southern California, we are under an air quality alert. Look at how this smoke moves over the next 24 hours. So it's not just going to be contained to the Inland Empire. This is going to start to make its way into Orange County. It's going to make its way into the San Gabriel Valley, San Fernando Valley, especially when a lot of us wake up tomorrow morning. It's a Sunday morning. You take a look outside and you're going to see some of the smoke and it's all from this wildfire. That's how intense and how brutal brutal these conditions are right now. Even making its way, let me take a step out of the way, I'm sorry to, to uh, cover that up for you, into the LA Basin. So you can see it's going to start itself over going into Saturday night. Look at how that's moving. Sunday morning, right before the lunch hour, the th this smoke is going to start to make its way into downtown Los Angeles and into the San Fernando Valley as well by then. So we're going to take a look uh, at uh, what we're dealing with right now, not just uh, the smoke, but it's also that air quality alert. So you can see most of us here in Southern California, we are under this alert. Our uh, air quality is not good right now, and it's all due to that wildfire smoke. And it's not just for the Inland Empire. We're seeing this in Orange Orange County. We're seeing this uh, in Los Angeles County, up in the mountains. Uh, we've got that over in Glendale, Glendora, San Bernardino, Hemet, Temecula, over into Mission Viejo, and into Anaheim. So all of these areas, um, this air quality alert is basically saying, be careful spending time outside, especially if you're sensitive to this. This is going to be in effect 
all the way until Monday night. Look at these temperatures. You guys, we are just an hour away from sunset and we are still dealing with triple digit heat here in Southern California. And that is the case over in San Bernardino and in Highland. It is still ranging from 100 to 105 degrees. And the concern with this heat wave, yeah, we'll get this kind of heat every now and then. But what makes it dangerous and what makes this fire danger so critical is that we are seeing day after day after day of these temperatures just soaring into the triple digits. And on top of that, a big concern we've been following these excessive heat warnings, these heat advisories. These are in place because this heat is dangerous and not because of how hot it gets in the afternoon, but because we have no recovery, no relief at night. A lot of us only dropping down to the 70s and 80s. Here's a look at our overnight lows and you can see that 75 over in San Bernardino. So near Highland, we're dropping down to the 70s and 80s tonight which means it stays quite warm going into our evening hours. Taking a look at our red flag warnings, we are dealing with critical fire conditions. I know this doesn't include San Bernardino County. This includes um, our Ventura County, LA County Mountains, San Gabriel's. This has the Santa Monica Mountains, but this hasn't been in place. We've been following this in the next weather center since last week, and that's because we have all the conditions that are favorable for these fires, very similar to the line fire, to start and to spread rapidly. Rapidly. And this is what makes it dangerous. It's hot out there. It's been hot. It's dry. We've got those winds out there. And with some of these fires, I mean, it's all of these things that are working together. They also create their own weather like we're seeing with the line fire. And this is what makes things very dangerous. Now, we're not dealing with everyone with these really crazy winds, but we do have these gusts picking up, especially in the afternoons and the evenings. And then once these fires create their own weather, that's when those winds do get a little bit more intense. So that's that's going to be the big concern going into tonight. We could very well see that. I know a lot of you at home are probably thinking, you know, when when are we going to get the relief that we need here in Southern California? Excessive heat warnings are in place until Monday night. It's Tuesday. That's the day when things start to feel cooler. We'll start to see more clouds moving in, and that's when we're going to start to see the changes that we've been waiting for, the pattern change. But for right now, uh, we're going to continue on with this heat over the next 24 to 48 hours, although Monday will start to feel a little bit cooler. But for our standards, you guys, it's still hot out there, and the big thing Thing with the line fire is that it is creating its own weather and we could continue to see that going into tonight. Danny, yeah, we know last night uh, was really uh, a night that fire crews were able to make progress mm -hmm. out there. I'm not sure if we have that video. Are we able to take the webcam over in Running Springs right now? I'm just checking with our producer here. Here we go. Um, oh, it looks like, you know, traffic has been all cleared now. Moments ago, Gio mm, was looking yeah. at this and it was a back to back traffic. Uh, we're told that it currently is uh, the 330 is closed as people in Running Springs and Arrow Bear Lake are under mandatory evacuations here. Um, Moment, you could see some cars coming yep. down right now. Uh, as I as I said moments ago, there might be a break in traffic here, but uh, this camera, I've been watching it for quite some time, and it has been uh, in bumper to bumper traffic as people are being diverted to the 18 right now. As the 3:30 does remain closed, um, as Running Springs and the Arrow Bay. Arrow Bear Lake area do remain under mandatory evacuations there. And that's some good news, especially when you consider if it was back to back bumper to bumper traffic getting yeah. out of there. You can see people leaving with their trailers. And, there. that, and yeah. that, that's it's frightening to think that if you were stuck bumper to bumper and you couldn't really move with a fire moving this quickly, that would certainly be a cause for concern. But at least by not seeing that much traffic, that's at least some good news there. Some more good news was uh, regarding that update when we were talking to the PIO about uh, 45 minutes or so ago. Uh, that she knew of. There were no injuries reported so far or structures damaged, so that's something to bear in mind so far. But of course, as we've mentioned throughout the evening, the line fire continues to grow in size, or at least it, it looks to our vantage point that it will continue to grow in size. It tripled in size overnight to over 7,000 acres, but at 0% containment, and even just with the reports from Lori Perez live on the scene and mm -hmm. her uh, vantage point, fire just inching and inching closer and closer. 
uh, in certain spots makes it exceptionally uh, concerning moving forward as we go through the rest of this night into tomorrow and into the new work week as well because as Danny pointed out the weather is not easing up anytime soon. We're going to have to hold on for at least a little bit longer in terms of getting some sort of relief. But to Leslie's point as well, the nighttime hours, if there's going to be anything, if there's going to be any relief or help in fighting this fire during the nighttime, according to Cal Fire, crews were able to continue making some progress because of the relatively higher humidity and the mm -hmm. nighttime water dropping helicopters. The difficulty on the flip side of that, what we've been seeing here this afternoon, is the fact that this fire is so large. It's proving to be so powerful, it's creating its own weather system. And that's affecting, you know, creating some lightning strikes, that's grounding some air support. And of the crews we've been seeing on the ground, we know that it is difficult terrain. It's hard to get in and around this area. And then on top of all of that is the fact that you notice all the green. There's so much that can burn so quickly and has burned so quickly so far. And it's so hard to see. You notice mm -hmm. this right now from our cameras and our screens, it's orange, it's blanketed. Now that leads to air quality concerns for anybody who might still be in the area. And then beyond that area as well, because we know that it's windy and that's moving it left and right and getting in the way of, uh, you know, sometimes your day-to-day -day activities. And Lori talked about just how dangerous, right, this, this fire sounds. And she said mm -hmm. it sounded like essentially like a waterfall there. She could hear the wind, uh, the, the crackling of all the, um, you know, everything that is burning in that area. And we're talking about a fire that is essentially moving uphill. We know when we had Cal Fire here at our station about mm -hmm. a month ago, they said the steeper the slope, the quicker this fire can run up and this is an entire mountain area yep and all it has is to really continue to go up so um the hope there is that the air support can make some gains especially through the night but geo when you look at this it's just the fire from all directions left to right of our screen here yep. um, you see a wall of flames um, and aside from that you can't make out the sky uh, this here is video from earlier a little bit closer to some of those flames and you see that steep terrain you can make out this very steep mountainous terrain an hour ago san bernardino county fire did send out a tweet saying that they have engine crews hand crews dozers management staff all working around the clock to protect lives and property and i think when people are leaving their mm -hmm. homes they're evacuating their homes or some people that may have not been home right. at the time when these evacuation orders were made um, their biggest worry is their property mm -hmm. and and many times you won't get answers until fire crews get a handle on this. But the San Bernardino County Fire reassuring people that they have crews up in these areas. They have engines up there, dozers up there to protect lives and property. And on that note, we also want to give you the live view from SkyCal. That's on the left side of your screen. The video from earlier is on the right side. And while you may not see the intensity of flame that you're noticing on the right side of your screen, you still see some hot spots there. And you notice all of the smoke that is billowing mm -hmm. up right now. You notice the uphill, the, there it is right there. You notice taking it full screen to the left, to the middle of your screen, to the right side, and it just really paints a picture of just how difficult it is to get a handle on this fire and just how much opportunity essentially that this fire has to burn through so much. Just that right there alone kind of captures the image as efficiently as it can. We also want to give you while we have this video up and everything else and as we approach seven o'clock this evening in case anybody's just joining us or wondering uh, when it comes to evacuation orders and warnings. Uh, first we want to tell you the evacuation shelter because in case somebody was mm -hmm. out of the home or is just now catching up on things maybe they weren't there when this first started or is just getting back. The evacuation shelter is the Emmanuel Baptist Church that is in Highland on 28355 Baseline Street. And then the animal evacuation shelter, in case you do have animals, pets, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Notice the aircraft there on the middle of your screen there too. So that's at least some a good sight to see because we haven't seen a lot of those throughout the evening. The animal evacuation shelter is the Devore Animal Shelter that is on Shelter Way in San Bernardino at 19777 Shelter Way. Now to run through the evacuation warnings, the, the warnings haven't changed. We'll get to the orders because they're a little bit more lengthy in just a second. But the warnings so far are neighborhoods east of Church Street, 
north of Highland Avenue and neighborhoods east of Weaver, north of Greenspot to the Iron Bridge. Now, I wanted to bring up the warnings first, not just because the orders are much longer, but because there's the warning and you have to keep in mind that things could change at any given moment. It's a little bit different than the orders, which is to say you need to get out immediately. The warnings sort of keep you on your toes and just say be prepared just in case at any given moment it could change. You see the map on your screen there. That's the orders and warnings. Now, given how fast this fire is moving and given what we've been seeing so far this evening, the reason we wanted to point out the warnings is because those could very well change into orders at any given moment. So that's why. Now we'll run through the evacuation orders. These are the ones already established. We'll start with the most recent ones that were given to us uh, in the last couple of hours. They're the communities of Running Springs and Arrow Bear Lake and area east of Orchard Road to Clover Hill from Highland Avenue north to the foothills. Those are the two most recent ones at about 5 to 5.30 this evening. And then the ones before that that have been in place a little bit longer, all underdeveloped land east of Highway 330 to Summer Trail Place and north of Highland Avenue, areas of Running Spring east of Highway 330 and south of Highway 18. And finally, the area from Calle del Rio to Highway 38, including Greenspot Road north. So all of that to keep in mind, you see it on the screen there and it's just something as you take a look at the SkyCal footage on your left the magnitude of this is not something to be understated yeah there are, there are a lot of evacuation orders i know mm -hmm. this is a lot of information but if you're in this area this is very important information we do want to get down to uh lori perez who is down there on the ground lori what can you uh see from where you're standing what can you tell us there yeah, so we've moved a little further up 330 um, towards Running Springs to give you an idea of what they are dealing with in these mountains. Over the side here, you can see how close we are to the flames that keep uh, kind of erupting and then dying down. But you can see how dense this smoke is. This is what uh, people who live in this area and firefighters who are watching all of this are having to deal with. If we swing back around here to the left, uh, okay, or we go all the way around, uh, you can see some of the other flames. Let's walk over to the other side of the street here, Greg, if we can, carefully. I want to show you that all up and down these mountains, there are hot spots that the crews are watching and they have watched as these have jumped the roads and gone uh, closer and closer down to downtown. But you can see how steep this terrain is how difficult it is going to be to watch all of these flames overnight. This is extremely dense brush and trees. Crews, we did see hand crews uh, going down the side of the mountain at the last spot that we were at. Now, understandably, a lot of these areas here, they will just monitor. Uh, they won't necessarily send crews down unless they really begin to erupt. But uh, you can see they are the source of so much of this growing fire. If we go back over here, you can see that this has really started to pick up again. And uh, we, of course, have put on the masks because it is so dense up here. Uh, we were given the go ahead to to be up here in order to show you the intensity of this flames, but it's not a place that we want to stay for very long. Uh, so we're going to send it back to you at this point, guys. Lori, thank you so much, and uh, we certainly value the perspective uh, down below, but there you see fire engines yeah. and uh, response crews. I see someone riding a bike up the, mm -hmm. uh, up the hill there as well, but you know, just seeing the color, seeing the intensity of that smoke, the haze, the flames just really paints a picture, and it looks almost like, fi like someone right there, uh, fire crew, oh, and the flames inching closer and closer to these homes right here on the street. When you look at the geography here mm -hmm. and what we're really seeing is that you see that this community does have this fire line. Yep. Um, and that is a great sign. What we see with fires many times is that despite the fire lines, um, th the winds will push just one ember. It will get caught in a roof and that could then ignite a home. In this case, we're not seeing any homes, um, you know, that have caught fire yet. We're mm -hmm. seeing plenty of fire crews on standby here to protect these structures, um, these very large homes in this area here. And you can see they're all just kind of monitoring the flames mm -hmm. here that have kind of hopscotched their way and continue, it looks like, uh, to burn up this slope here. Right, despite the fact that you see just how mm -hmm. much more it could burn. And then you notice, uh, looks like families, perhaps even spectators, mm -hmm. just kind of keeping an eye 
on things as well, but we tend to notice that in really just about any type of fires that you'll have people standing around and looking, including this right here, someone at the, uh, on their roof, a new video showing, you know, capturing footage wow. and images and the, the intensity of it just can't be ignored, especially with the contrast of the flames in front of that person oh, while standing on top of the roof. I, just unbelievable to see. You know, that's a very dangerous yep. situation there. You can see just uh, the smoke taking over this neighborhood. Look how quickly it blankets yep. that neighborhood um, as hand crews are right there on the fire lines trying to do what they can to make a break and, you know, keep that fire at bay from some of these structures and homes. Um, Gio, at this mm -hmm. hour, we have not heard of any homes um, that have caught fire. Right. We have not heard of any injuries, but a lot has happened in yep. the last two hours since this fire has exploded and we're hoping to get more information for, from fire crews but you can see that they have ambulances there on standby in case they're needed um, as they're working really around the clock here to get a handle on this and uh, given the fact that so much has happened in just these last couple of hours contrasting it to the 24 hours ago when it tripled in size this is certainly not the last we will update you on the line fire in san bernardino county near high Island. We're covering it for you on all platforms from mm -hmm. the sky, from the ground, online and on air here at KCAL News. We'll keep you posted and back on air in the next hour with KCAL News at 8 and you can follow along KCALNews.com as well.